Stem cells hold immense promise for medical treatment because they can take on the traits of all kinds of cells and then replicate many times over. But they're also the subject of fierce controversy because the most versatile cells can only be derived from human embryos. So what if you could utilize stem cells found in your own body? As Brian Rooney reports, it's not only possible, it's already proven to be effective in animals. Yeah, slow down, slow, slow, slow. This is Hunter, a nine-year-old golden retriever. His big, friendly personality dominates life at home with Frank and Linda Reha in Burbank, California. Do you love your mama? Eating, sleeping, daily walks, Hunter calls the shots. This is like our child. I mean, he is just such an important part of the family. Life revolves around Hunter. <laughs> yeah, he's a celebrity on the street. Everybody knows Hunter. But Hunter has a serious problem. Severe arthritis in his left hip is so painful that he can't run or leap like a healthy dog. His leg, it, it's almost like it's lifeless and it'll drift back like this. And you can tell he's not putting any weight on this leg at all right now. X-rays show that Hunter has hip dysplasia, a common ailment in purebred dogs in which the ball of the leg bone is loose from the socket, causing painful wearing on the joint. You can see that the edges of the bone are very worn away. They're not nearly as smooth. Facing the possibility of a shortened life for Hunter, the Rehas were considering a $10,000 hip replacement when the doctors offered something new, different, and much cheaper, only about $2,500. They could treat Hunter with his own stem cells, the healing and regenerative cells that live in both humans and animals. And I think this is an excellent in-between that may mean he, ne he may never need a total health. When you talked to me last night, it was just like this calm came over me. In the race to perfect what's called regenerative medicine, stem cell therapy for animals is ahead of treatment in humans because it's not so strictly regulated. It's not experimental, it's here. And while debate rages over the ethics of embryonic stem cell research, doctors have made stunning progress with what are called adult stem cells, recovered in this case from body fat. They're less powerful than embryonic cells, but they don't require the destruction of an embryo. There are no side effects and no problems with rejection because the patient is also the cell donor. We're kind of reverting the body back to our younger age or our younger stage when we were in more of a regenerative phase. In a fairly easy procedure, Hunter's stem cells will be recovered from his body fat, isolated in a laboratory, and re-injected into his hip in greater concentration than his own body could accomplish. This is really big to you, isn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Why? He's my boy. <laughs> He's just special. He's just a good boy, you know, and um, I get emotional, but it's because I love him so much. You're kind of on the leading edge of a science that could ultimately be applied to humans. Mm -hmm. That yes. you could get your hip fixed. Sure. Maybe I'd be in line next. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that helps science. But if it helps our dog, it'll just be wonderful. Hunter is led away and prepped in an animal surgical ward that would be the envy of a lot of small hospitals. Could you feasibly take any fat cells in the body? Yep. He cuts just behind the shoulder and finds a good deposit of fat. Hunter's a little overweight, which adds to his trouble. And how much do you need to collect? I'd like to get at least 30 grams. And that's it. Hunter's fat cells are packed up and whisked away to the laboratory of a company called Vetstem outside San Diego, where this procedure has been developed. Here the fat is chopped up, treated, and put in a centrifuge that separates the stem cell. Theoretically, it's pretty simple. Yeah, the concept is very simple. It took a lot of years for us to figure out where these cells were, which ones were they, and, and how to use them. Vetstem CEO and founder Robert Harmon says they've treated about 3,000 horses, many with joint problems. One of them was a racehorse named Bia Bono, which had bone chips in the knee and damage to the sac that holds cushioning fluid around the joint. It threatened to end his career, if not his life. You're always skeptical about something new. You want to see if it works, and so somebody has to try it. We did. It worked. And away they go on the vessels of maturity and Aladdin and Brian. Got After stem cell injections, Bia Bono returned to racing and has since earned one and a quarter million dollars in prize money. Bia Bono demolishes field, takes the vessels of maturity two years in a row. What this is supposedly doing, which I think it is, is regenerating that capsule to where it's got that fluid and that cushion back in there for that joint. Good knee. Yeah, good knee. 
it's fairly safe to try it, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I don't see any reason why humans aren't doing it. With so much success in horses, word got around, and That's people started to ask Harmon if Vetstem could Station treat their beloved dogs. A Newfoundland named Magic that was nearly crippled by arthritis was one of the earlier patients. We just thought, well, it couldn't really hurt her. There was no downside to it, so it was worth a try. How soon did you notice a difference after the surgery? I would say about a month. About a month, she was dramatically improved. The treatment has brought significant improvement about 70% of the time, allowing veterinarians to be the pioneers in practical use of stem cell. If we were creating cells in a bottle from donors or we were trying to use cells from embryos, which you hear a lot of the controversy about, that would be fully regulated on the veterinary side. But right now, because it's the animal's own cells, it's like a transplant. It's a surgical transplant of cells. We're allowed to do that in the veterinary world. Stem cells show great promise for healing not only joints, but damaged hearts, livers, and kidneys in animals and in humans. We're a long ways from growing a whole organ outside of a body and transplanting it. We're decades away, I'm sure. It's a very difficult prospect. What we can do is take these cells and put them into a damaged organ and help the organ truly heal itself. Right now, it usually takes two days to send fat cells to a remote laboratory and return them for reinjection. A couple of companies are working on a process and the machinery to isolate stem cells right in the surgical ward. One day, just maybe, stem cells will be injected into human stroke and heart attack victims, maybe even used to regenerate damaged spinal cords within hours of injury. I think that the cells we have within our body are much better at healing us than any devices man can contrive. So I believe that this will replace many kinds of devices, um, many kinds of procedures, by using your cell's own ability to heal you by just placing those cells in the right environment at the right time and unlocking their power. That is still in its early stages. For Hunter, the golden retriever, his stem cells arrived back to the animal hospital the next day and were injected into his hip in a short and simple procedure. My gut feeling is always that they're going to do really well. I mean, so far, every case that I've seen and, and uh, my colleagues that are doing this too are showing excellent, excellent results. Two weeks after the injection, still early, Hunter is a different dog. He wasn't doing that before. Improving. He's got his range of motion. Obviously moving easier, happier, and so are his owners. He jumped up on the bed, which is about three feet tall, and he hasn't done that in quite a few months. We kind of freaked out because he's supposed to stay quiet, but uh, <laughs> he was right up there and ready to go. For Hunter, a dog's life is a very good one on the leading edge of medical science. This is Brian Rooney for Nightline in Burbank, California. Doctors are now testing adult stem cell therapy in people as well to combat diseases such as leukemia and heart disease, though progress is often slower in humans because of the hurdles and risks involved. And this story has already set off a lively discussion on our website. You can join and contribute at nightline.abcnews.com. Our thanks to Brian Rubin.